behind God, where is your face? You are looking in the same direction as God, but you are looking from a position behind God. So you see more than what God is able to see. You don't accept that. Okay? That is what yoga is. So you are able to see more than God and say, hey God, you cannot do a mistake. You shall obey the rules of dharma. Because you are born by God. Then God says, you don't have to command me, you come and stand by my side and work. So when you come on this side, how do you come? Come on this side. Now what happens? You are by the side of God, you are also facing the same world and the people live. You see how God sees the world. Then you say, enough of it, you hang yourself, you do all the management, I will come back here, protect me, save me, I will do, I will be happy to do my work. You understand the role of Pradakshina? So, Gatihi Pradakshinya Kramana Vashana Jahudi Vidihi, when you say that prayer, the deep meaning is, I am confident of looking, serving your command, I am going to, I am able to see beyond you, I am able to see behind you, I am capable of standing by you, but my position, I will be here as your servant, because that is good for the world. That is surrender. This is absolutely different from the model where you cannot question a God, you cannot cross a God, you cannot question a scripture, nothing doing. God says, if you can, please go, I will give you the way. That is what yoga brings you. That is what Bhagavad Gita brings you. That is what Veda brings you. When you say, Vekam Sat Vitraha Bhuda Vadanti, one supreme divinity is the source of all these manifestations and I am that, I am not telling in between that, I am telling that supreme divinity. If I am that, I can go to that. But what we teach for the benefit of society is live like this, be respectful of the God, be respectful of the society, so that you are happy. <coughs> Customization and child adaptation are all these particular things. So gods are humans advanced in Europe. Any questions? Yes. Um, what do you think of the idea that each part of the eight steps are contained in all of them? So that if I'm in an asana, I don't want to cheat or lie about it, I, I want to concentrate, I want to focus while I'm doing asana. Um, is, it, is, that a, is, that a, is that a way of thinking about it, that the whole is contained in each part of it? Yes. Yoganga means Yoga is there in that, in its totality, but in a scaled down way. It is not isolated. It is there, but in a scaled down way. Right. Okay. The example of, take a little bit of salt, put it in the water, stir it, you don't see the salt. But if you ask where is the salt in this, you can say it's in the top, middle, in the every drop of it. But how is it? It is there as a part of its own existence. So Yama is that manifestation of yoga where the dominant feature is this. Niyama is a dominant model of yoga in this particular aspect. When you do the pranayama, the dominant model is the energy that's coming out. The still things are also there at the dominant level. Sarama is the dark comes in that way. 
Okay? So we have got multiple expressions of that. Having said this much to consolidate the presentation, a recommended checklist for validating or auditing yoga traditions. As practiced today, as was practiced, or as it should be practiced tomorrow. There should be some standards. So what is the standards we are looking at? <coughs> is this tradition coming from a primary resource or from a secondary interpreted resource? <coughs> Pure tradition as a resource or is it a historical flavor? Is it provided by a master or is it induced into the tradition? Are the traditions having a continuity with a living master? There are many traditions which we have lost because there is no succession. There is only description of the book. Are the traditions resting more on faith claims or actual delivery of holistic welfare? Are you delivering what you are speaking? Is the tradition dynamic, responsive, responsible and relevant for contemporary society? For example, that Kesari Mudra practice and uh, <coughs> where they tell the bottom is split and the tongue is elaborated, you know, elongated, roll back, and it goes to the windpipe, all those kind of things. It's not relevant for today's society. And you find all such funny things coming up in the Kumbha Mela where millions of sadhus come and plan, I'm the master yogi. So what is it that you can do? I can pull a huge stone from this one. What is the difference between you and a truck? And why do you want your life to become a truck? Told a tantric, it said that uh, on the Ganges River, the banks of the Ganges River, there was a great tantric yogi. And uh, he met Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and said, I have achieved such supernatural powers, uh, I, can, I don't have to wait for a boatsman here, I can just fly from here to the other side just by my yoga power. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa quite a bird and said, how many years you spent to learn this particular, you know, specialize this particular thing? You spent 12 years to learn this particular thing. What can be done by a foreigner giving livelihood to that <coughs> boatsman to take you, ferry you from this car <laughs> to that car? You spent 12, of, 12 years of your precious life and energy. What a pity. <laughs> this is how people look at it. Not that one should not pursue that. Yes, it is exotic. It's uh, like a, a, a toy, you play around with nature, get the energy and all that. But then that is not enough. Is there a peer recognition for the school teaching a specific tradition? It is not just telling that my peer is, uh, I saw somebody 400 years old, Baba, in the uh, Himalaya. No. Do you have living peer recognition here, right now? Can you validate it?